as of today, six nine broke the internet, right? He had a bit of a he had a he had an interesting yeah, he's had an interesting twenty four hours or so, hasn't he? Right? He dropped a video, announced a live G live, broke the record on that, blah blah blah. People are going crazy, so that seems to have caught everyone's attention on the interwebs. Um I for one don't really care, to be honest. It is what it is. He's doing his thing. Let him, you know. Um, I think people getting all hot and bothered, especially in hip hop, is the moral police in hip hop always made me laugh, really, innit? Like, you know, some people are allowed to, you know, uh, step out on their wives and the mother of their children if they're co parenting in the most outlandish, disrespectful ways, you know, not give a shit about their children, um, fuck over their partners who came up with them in the game, uh, sign their friends onto bad deals. Uh, you know, generally just do some really shady shit and not really cause it out for the most part. You're still allowed to exist and have a career, but this guy gets involved in some criminal activity, and as criminals are, and criminals in general, you know, people that do bad things, people that abide by the street code, there is an element of that kind of scene where people are just shitty people, isn't it? You just inter- you just interact with the worst of society, um, generally, right? There are some occasions where you might bump into a boss, you might bump into somebody who's, who classifies themselves as a general, who's actually, you know running shit and doing you know doing things by the by in a good way but for the most part you run into some really really um dodgy characters when you're living that kind of street life so nothing should be a surprise nothing should be a shock everything is fair game in that respect some way shape or form again don't get me wrong what he did morally isn't the best thing you know and if you're i think if he's if he would have come out and said, "Hey, I'm going to specifically snitch on the people who did me wrong," fair enough. But the fact that he included the other dude, who I think is a could be the one that he essentially um, gave money to to shoot as to shoot at who's his name, um, Chief Keith. I'm assuming that yeah, definitely was. I think it was Chief Keith. Um, he paid that kid to go and uh, attempt, essentially try and assassinate Chief Keith. It didn't work. It didn't. Well, it, it, that kid wasn't successful, and then he got picked up for it. And he ends up telling the police about it. Like, I don't see how you can get away with that, really. You know, witness protect. I mean, being an informant for the police is really strange. You, essentially, it's a get out free jail card. It kind of reminds me of like filing a bankruptcy, right? In some respect, you can rack up on a massive amount of debt. And of course, you're going to have to, you know, your credit score is fucked up for the best part of seven years and all that stuff, or maybe more. Um, but essentially, you get the chance to rack up as many as much debt as you want, max out all these credit cards, be irresponsible with your finances, and then if you declare bankruptcy, everything is kind of, uh, everything is sort of like okay, and you can kind of start again from scratch. Snitching is sort of the same thing. It seems like in the um, United States uh, justice system, it's a very dodgy, very strange thing because it's not as if like you know. I don't know, unless maybe what he snitched upon has allowed the police to bring down an entire network, like, globally of these kind of gangsters, but essentially, what, those crips that he was hanging out with in New York, they were, what, mostly on the East Coast? It wasn't, was it even a nationwide thing? Did they have cells in other parts of the world? Were they situated somewhere in, like, Colombia and shit? I don't think so, right? It was mostly, like, a, a thing, you know, in the hood, whatever it may be, so... It's not as if the police are gaining that much insight from what he's telling them, unless they didn't have a case at all, and he was the one that was filling in all the blanks, and that's different. But it's still strange, isn't it, that you can do a crime, be involved in it? Because I think there's even videos of him running out of the car with a gun and shit, like jacking people. It's just bizarre that he just, yeah, as long as you tell, you get, you're fine. You can you can resume your life as normal. But I think that's what people are annoyed with, really. And if everything else is like, it's whatever, isn't it? Um, I think he would feel it, 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 I guess it's personal preference you know whatever you stand on the matter but if you would have said hey I'm going to switch on this dude because he slept with my child's mother I'm going to switch on this guy because he tried to kill me okay you would have a, you know you'd have to you'd have to kind of consult your own moral compass because I think there's quite a few of those mob guys that sit on that have interviews with that guy value tainment who are similar in that kind of way right most of those mob guys that tell their story are usually due to snitch or cooperate with the police it's rarely the people that sit down and tell all other people that are all kind of you know um, by the book by the you know, by the nature of it who kept quiet and just kept it moving because you will not want to talk to anyone and then you just want to keep it to yourself so if you want to go and talk to somebody it's mostly because you cooperated and you know if everything's already um been documented or recorded or put into file you know um, the case is closed on that one you can't be judged again but yeah i don't know man it's a strange one really i just don't think it's that big of an issue but i guess 
um, there's a weird sort of a cultural clash happening now in hip hop at the moment, especially with the new kids and the old guard. I guess older oh, new kids and the people who deem themselves as like you know, um, or how they what they call them, hip hop historians. There's like a culture clash because the kids coming up now don't really know who Africa Bambata is, right? They just want they just want to hear good tunes. They don't care about the history of hip hop. They don't know anything about graffiti or breakdancing element of it or the DJ element of it. They just want to be entertained and listen to good music so that side of things is competing now with you know the people who do hold um hip-hop as this kind of I wouldn't say it's maybe that's a hallowed thing to them right there's something a little bit more it means more than just a, a cdq tune or a stream on spotify it means more to them right so that means and there's things attached to that culture whether it's again b-boy djing graffiti um radio mixtapes uh baseball caps there's things that's just attached to it that are just ingrained to them they can never let go and then part of it is the kind of element that you know it's a music that came from a diff- disenfranchised minority group who were kind of using it as a gateway to get out of this situation that they were in right trying to get to a better place um and because you spend most of your time in the streets you might have got involved in some you know sticky things some illegal things but you don't necessarily you know, and then there's a street code attached to that too that enables people to uh, maneuver in hip hop industry because part of the things they learn, a lot of the things I guess you would learn being on the streets and drugs, being in a gang, would kind of relate and relay itself quite well into how you operate in corporate world, isn't it? Obviously, you can't. There's no element in corporate world or in, you know, in the kind of uh, legit world where you can essentially uh, get your will by threats of violence or by enacting physical violence you have to kind of play the political game but by and large some of the dirty deeds that you see on the street definitely get mirrored within the corporate offices so some of that stuff is you know essential but a lot of those codes you're going to hold them dear to your heart in it like no snitching not speaking about another man's pockets trying to have work that's always kind of uh, rotating on the street keeping your name hot Da, 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 having head on the swivel and then you have to fight blah 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 there's all these kind of things that are attached to it um so it's interesting to see the culture clash happening in it um but again i have sympathy for both ends i think if you're just a fan that just likes to hear what he has to say and you want to get you know crunk and bob your head and stuff then fair enough enjoy it if you're somebody that thinks the fundamentals and the pillars of hip-hop are being um pissed up pissed upon right they're being disregarded and people are not taking that stuff seriously anymore and you're annoyed by it i understand that too but i don't know i think there's room for both of those perspectives to exist i think i don't think there's it's either either or but he did explain himself i thought pretty well regarding the whole situation he kind of explained that essentially he snitched on or he reason why he told because he felt as if he wasn't um people weren't being loyal to him and you know he feels as if um, he didn't owe them anything because they essentially stabbed him in the back by the actions that they did which you know is really you really have to consult again you have to consult your own moral compass as to what you think is the truth in that respect um i don't think that's actually accurate you know i think he's kind of conflating a lot of things and being over over simplistic about the issue because you know part of the reason why he was successful and part of the reason why that stuff worked is because he did play up to this idea that he was this you know teflon don super hard gangster dude right he wasn't he didn't tell us that it was all a marketing gimmick he didn't inform about that we just knew about this after the fact or if you were kind of paying attention you found out but it was never implicitly said hey i'm just doing this for views it was always like i'm about this life this is what i'm doing bloody blah 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 i'll shoot you i'll kill you i'll come to your hood i'll film a video at two in the morning jeremy he was kind of um, doing that stuff in order to paint himself one way because he was confident enough in the people that he paid to be part of his entourage that nothing was going to happen to him because they were you know ride or die and they were really about that life and they would kind of take it to the nth degree if needed as they proved in many instances that were you know recorded and documented and spoke about in court so i think he was, he's kind of conflating it and being a bit over simplistic but again he's a marketing genius he's a master at kind of manipulating and twisting the narrative to fit his own story and if anything he's a product of this generation really you know he's exactly the kind of artist that the generation sort of deserves and if anything you know he kind of reminds of do you remember the, there's that video clip of um or it's a story of that ai of that computer generated influencer that just i think recently got signed to like an agency like a legit one that's what he reminds me of 
she's like an amalgamation of everything that people like on social kind of representing this kind of avatar this sort of like ai uh virtual reality sort of like you know computer generated image of one influencer looks like right from the freckles to the way her eyes are to the freaking choker thing to the little pose that she does how she stares at the camera there's there's things that they kind of analyze took in all the best bits of all the influencers on social and put them to one, one person and i guess if you were trying to make an archetype of a rapper nowadays right especially in the kind of clickbait um uh, disposable um instagram ready sort of person he would be the perfect one in it like especially if you just look at him from like a portrait mode on a phone his video he's, he's compelling viewing you can't take your eyes off it right from the hair to the grills to the girls in the back to all the pain and shit to the silly lyrics to the really simplistic beats are very um they're not you know they're, they're, they're not like um they're not obstructive they don't they don't kind of inst- they don't um elicit a kind of negative reaction doesn't when you hear bad music it kind of makes you want to turn it off the first snare or the first kick drum his music is so whatever that it's either you go hard for it and you bob your head or you just let it play because it's two minutes right it doesn't necessarily it doesn't you know disturb your ruin your flow it sort of just comes and it plays and the word is what it is it's sort of the thing where if you heard it on a shuffle on your spotify you would just let it play out you wouldn't jump and go and skip it to the next song um, so I think he's perfect for now because he just fits directly into what they want. And again, if he's able to kind of keep up this bravado and talk the way he talks, then maybe it's going to work out for him. But I don't know. You, you would have, you would have thought after everything he's gone through, he would just would have kind of wanted to keep his head down and do that. But again, you know, I think what we've learned about the internet and what we've learned about social media is that once you have a thing, whether it's negative or positive, you just have to lean into it. Everyone that's successful, or or let's say that like everyone that everyone anyone on social or public figure or an influencer that people especially the ones that people hate because i think the successful ones are a bit hard to quite quantify because you know people's fandom is a bit hard to rationalize on some way shape or form but i think the ones that people are detest the ones people think are like oh this guy's an idiot he doesn't know what he's talking about she's dumb he's she's disgusting he's not this da, da, da. usually they have a thing like a common thing like two of like one one to three character traits that really irk people and those character traits that irk people they usually lean into it so that that vocal minority that hates you keeps speaking about you keeps you know drumming up the interest makes other people come and check out your stuff and then they might think you know what you're not that bad and then suddenly you've got new fans so in in um without them realizing uh haters are kind of essentially your best asset in that respect if you're an influencer that doesn't again you have to be a certain breed you have to be able to uh be will you have to be the kind of person that can uh, w- withstand or absorb that kind of level of scrutiny online because i think you know i'm never nowhere on this kind of level of attention but i would imagine if you're that kind of person your notifications are going off there's a tendency uh, or a temptation to check what people are saying you scroll down your mentions you see a couple of good stuff and then three or four horrible hurtful comments come there from randoms you kick on a picture it's actually a real person he looks like he could fuck you up like it can really fuck with your head in it so you'd have to be a person that can handle people speaking about you in a really negative manner consistently on a consistent basis like anytime you make a mistake they're just waiting for you to fuck up and i guess i must play in your head in it if you're just living your everyday life they must be in your head because you know we are one of this i think some people say it i think elon musk said it the other day with the on joe rogan podcast he said uh whenever you leave your phone at home it's sort of like phantom limb syndrome isn't it? you feel like something's missing you have to run back into your house sometimes i've left my my flat and i've kind of walked down the street and i forgot i've had my phone i've walked back in got in the lift got to my floor opened the door do you know what i mean like you you'll make some really crazy decisions just because you want to get your phone back right um so i guess it takes a certain person to want to be that character job but like i said like i think if you're not a fan of his the best thing you can do is just ignore what he does just not bring any attention to it don't watch or stream anything but the moment you start talking about his stuff even just in a roundabout way even if you start doing that really cuck thing that people do when they don't want to mention someone's name and they start putting the stars the asterisks on their name it's still going to make people curious about what he's doing right it, inevitably like even if he wasn't following him on social you would have heard people complaining or people kind of praising the fact that no most are complaining because you don't really hear if people unless it's drake you don't really hear people or even maybe kendrick you don't hear people on social that much actually praising something they're into 
it's never really that it's usually just you know them complaining about something they don't like so whenever you hear that your instant thing is to go and check it out right i think the mate, same thing might have happened with Lil Nas X even right some people hated that old old town road and then you check it out you know oh, actually this thing's a bop and then you continue being his friend or you continue being a fan of his but yeah it's an interesting uh conundrum i've got to play a bit of the ig live that he did actually where he's ragging and being aggressive online as per usual And, I've, and I'm hoping, like this is just a hope, I'm hoping that, you know, no one rags on the girls involved in a video. Because we do live in a world where, you know, I could see it happening where people like start, you know, sending mad abuse to those girls that are involved in the video. How can you hang out with the snitch? It's like, look, they just work in a the job. They're independent contractors. People have to make their money. Strip clubs have closed. They can't do walkthroughs anymore in clubs. It is what it is, isn't it? Let them get their coin and keep it moving. I don't think a girl should be kind of getting lambasted in this. If they are going to, I don't know. Maybe his girlfriend will because she's a bit of a troll herself, but she's probably built for it. But the rest of them allowed them in it. Let's them come for the. Let's see where, where he is actually. Yeah, Forward a bit. Forward. <laughs> it's an interesting way to start an IG live in it. as well but he seems really riled up in it i guess again maybe because of his percep his uh perception or the way he kind of goes about on social you would imagine that he wouldn't have been bothered but it seems as if he was generally annoyed by what people are saying about him on social which is strange because he seems like he understands why people would be hating him because he snitched but he still seems annoyed that people don't accept the reasons that he did it which is odd too, isn't it? Because you must accept that there's some people out there who are abide by the street code and no matter what someone does, even if somebody shot your mum point blank in her bedroom as she was sleeping, you would never be able to, you should never, that's a code, isn't it? You just, once you in that life and you make the fucking blood oath, whatever it is, or you get jumped in, that is what you commit to. You commit to a life where you can never involve law enforcement in any of your affairs that's just what it is we all know that even you know civilians like myself so i'm not sure why he's so angry about the whole issue it seemed very strange um uh he must have known what was going to happen and again maybe it's because he wants to paint this narrative that he was this like young innocent boy that got coerced into joining a gang and you know they used him as a cash cow but he's he's the one that went to get them he's he seek them out they didn't come to him that's the thing that makes the story even more tragic he went to go he went to go find the the most um legit uh real yeah the most legit kind of ready to go guys in his hood that would be willing to kind of stand behind him in music videos and make him look tough and then he that because that's enough and if you're going to do that that's fair enough use him as props cool but then he started to get involved in their business. He started to lean on them more. They started to extort him. Then this weird back and forth starts. And then, you know, essentially you're in a gang now. And you can't say you're not because you're part of it. You're enjoying the kind of notoriety. I'm assuming if he's walking down the street and people are kind of, you know, when he walks into a room, it's a different kind of energy. He's loving all that. Thing. He's getting all that, all that kind of hood love. He's loving it. The kind of... Um, the respect of others uh the fact that maybe he might have been you know i don't know he might have been able to get his own back on someone that you know jumped him back in the day by the fact that he's associated with these dudes so i don't know why he's so mad that's the thing is interesting he's really angry now again it could be just fear he's actually really worried for his life now because he's now stuck his head out of um 
you know, he's head over the fence and sort of let everyone know what that he's alive and he's about and what he's going to do. And it's only going to get worse from now on in terms of the attention, in terms of the scrutiny. Um, but what did you expect, my guy? Yeah, you know I mean, get, you must get cool. <laughs> we broke the record. What happened? That's a million. That could never. See, he seems really angry. He seems really riled up. And I think the maybe it's just the you know the competitive energy that he has because he's always been about numbers and he's always been telling people how many streams he got. He broke that record. Did this. So that's just a standard thing. But it could also it's also strange because I can understand this reaction if this was back in the day when we record labels mattered and when industry people mattered. And when radio spends mattered, that would be an instant reaction because you know if he was in the same situation twenty years ago, the industry could have essentially killed his career if they wanted to, right? Like, but with the advent of the internet and social media, you can effectively do what you you are effectively uncancelable if you've got fans. That's what I've discovered. I think cancel culture is officially over if you have actual real fans because I think most people that get cancelled, unfortunately, especially if they haven't done anything too heinous. They don't actually have real fans. They have people that, you know, are interested and check out what they do. Like, oh, cool. He did that. She did this. But they don't actually have real fans that will buy what they do, um, you know, without even thinking about it. And I think he has legit fans who will ride and die for him regardless of what he does. Like, in a similar vein of, like, a YouTuber. YouTubers have real fans, right? They go to a comedy club. They sell it out. They do an event. They sell it out. They do a tour. They sell it out. They put a product out. They sell it out. Because those fans will buy whatever. There's, I'm sure there's fans of some youtubers who don't even especially the makeup ones i'm sure there's some kids out there who just buy youtubers palettes and stuff um just to buy them just because they want to have it in their collection and show that they're actually part of the community and they want to feel like they're giving they're supporting their favorite artists to keep doing their favorite sorry content creators to keep doing what they're doing so i think that kind of reaction that he has now would be justified if it was if it was the back in the day because he would have felt as if like the industry is essentially uh putting him out of a job right they're essentially putting him into a corner where he has no other option but to do a life of crime again because he's got no way of making any legit money because you know once he's out of prison now but she um in, uh, regarding what he got himself into he's not like he's gonna get a normal job in it no one wants to have that kind of negative attention on you on them plus the face tattoos he's only got one avenue that he can kind of operate in that's like being on the internet being a kind of you know divisive figure doing music influence or whatever he's only got that one industry so i guess if you were if this was 20 years ago and this happened and yeah, understand the reaction but nowadays it doesn't matter he can essentially he could do whatever he could fart into a microphone for 22 minutes and it would still probably put up numbers so I don't really see why he's so like aggressive with it. That's four. Y'all got one. Y'all wouldn't even get one. Well, maybe, maybe because, maybe because he spent two years in, or in, essentially in prison too. That might be part of it as well. Do you know what I mean, <laughs> fearing for his life every day. So that could be also a reason why he's super angry. <laughs> But I said he was flossing anyway from the time he de stepped out, it? Like he bought four Lamborghinis and shit. But let's talk about it. Let's go through what he's talking about here. Yo, y'all watch the video? Oh, okay. Let's talk about someone here. Let's move on a bit. Come on, load, load, oh, load. Right here. Yeah. Come take this off real quick. I'm going to give you back. This watch? Over a half a million? Why? We can't beef. I broke the YouTube. I'm at 5 million views in one hour. Y'all can't even get 100,000 views. Listen, listen. We can't beef. There's no beef. I'm the king. Y'all know this. Listen. You know the legendary shit that I be talking about? You know why people so mad? Because they thought it was over for me. They counted me out. Oh, yo, you, yo, you ride it, it's over for you. Y'all could never. Y'all could never cooperate with the government and come back. Y'all can never do that. I'm a living legend at the age of 24 years old. You hear me? Look at the look at these 1.6 million. 
and a legend can you be a legend after having a career for what two years is that possible maybe i don't know legendary status will probably be 10 years plus right in the game consistent because you know part of the maybe resentment some of those artists would have is that he done all these funny all these games and essentially he's put himself in a position where if he keeps getting involved in nonsense, it will just keep... Is that, is that a fact? If he keeps getting involved in nonsense, it will just extend his longevity of his career. Maybe, I don't know. Because if he actually just settled... that, If he just focused on just the music and didn't do the nonsense on social, which is not something that could be part of his ID, but imagine if... Uh, 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 an assumption would be that if he just put music out every year, that every year from now on, the interest would wane. Because part of the reason why it, your interest is because of the antics. He, he's not good enough as a musician to just uh, enable him to keep reinventing himself year after year or album after album like other artists have to and kind of have to do similar to the kind of sticker a lot of people were giving um jay electronica right the fact that he was able he was allowed to sort of like leave after one tape have this retain his reputation not get held to the same standard as everybody else he doesn't have to like step in the ring he doesn't have to perform he doesn't have to make songs he didn't have to you know fight with the times um, you know struggle with the streaming uh, era he doesn't have to do all of that and then he's still got the backing of the industry and when he comes back in he gets a essentially a, a massive layup by having this secret album planned with Jay-Z one of the biggest hip artists in the world so some of the resentment comes from Jay Electronica comes from that too right it's not like an even playing field but that's just it isn't it life isn't fair unfortunately isn't it? it is what it is what can you do um, I don't know like what can you say like it just isn't fair he was, he's able again He's, he's learned from the YouTubers. He's able to kind of lean into whatever negative trait people don't like about him and just been able to exploit it for his gain. Again, he could be right. He might be a legend. I don't think he is. After two years of success, I think, you know, you have to kind of probably be in the game for, you know, to use DJ Mustard's adage of 10 summers and then you could probably be regarded as a legend. But, you know, considering the numbers he got, considering the traction he gets. And again, if we're in an industry where it seems like even though there's the internet, even if people have fans and they have Patreons and you can get money on AdSense, it seems that still the prevailing the prevailing metric of success is still, you know, streams, album sales, uh, money, possess, all these kind of like things that the industry tells you that you should be valuing are the things that artists value more so than how their music kind of like touches people, its longevity, bloody blah blah, blah blah like most of it is based on those kind of you know arbitrary numbers so if he smashed those arbitrary numbers and someone like me Mill was upset by him actually being able to do it it would basically prove his point that you know he might be a legend i don't know shout out to tory shout out to drake shout out to bad bunny y'all niggas can never stop playing with me stop playing with me look at this 1.6 million 1.6 million. We can't beef. Me and y'all not the same. King of wit. Why well, keep hearing King of New York? King of New York. Y'all not the kings of New York. Look at the numbers. Oh, Why well, he winning right now, yo? Yo, how y'all let that kid rat, right? How y'all let him rat and come home to beat? Still get more numbers than us. Break all the records. Why y'all let... Y'all can't stand it or something? Y'all can't stand it. Y'all can't... Listen... You live your you live your whole life, right? You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga. And 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 this is me, this is real Danny shit. Fuck 6ix9ine, right? This is some Daniel Hernandez shit. You live your whole life trying to be a real nigga, trying to be a stand-up tall, loyal guy. To try to shit on a kid like me, to be like, yo, fuck that, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat, he's a rat. To be like, yo, he ratted. To then a rat. A rat like me to come home and still do more numbers than you, I would be mad too. I would be mad too. If a rat came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad too. I would. I, I promise you I would be mad. If a rat came home to, like, the way I came home and did more numbers than me, I would be mad. I, you have every, every reason to be mad. Every so which is, again, some good self-awareness from him, of course, is a little bit, you know, it's done in jest. It's done with a little jab in the heart. I think you know if you're someone like Meek Mill, you should have never got involved. I think it's we can. It's fair to say that Meek Mill is terrible at the internet, right? We should be able to just categorically say that he's not good at the internet. He should not get involved in internet squabbles or beefs. 
you know, it never ends well for him. He seems to be really unable to kind of gauge what people are thinking and the current sentiment. He should have just stepped. He should have just viewed. He should have just waited for everyone else to make a decision, a comment first before stepping out. I think the whole like I'm a real guy kind of posturing was never going to work in this sort of like circus essentially coming to the Akasha 6 9 house and trying to be a stand up real guy it's just never going to work there's too much chaos it's either you get involved you cover yourself in paint or you just go home but you can't then start telling people to like get off the couch and you know stop playing the music so loud you just gotta either you know get in line or go home and he just should have just left and just left it as it is and plus you know he's girlfriend just gave birth you know to a child on this the same day as his birthday i mean there should be more things on your mind than what six nine is doing but again i think it's not even to rag on meek i think he's just a reflection of the industry i think there's some people in the industry again artists mostly who are just so annoyed that he's been able to be successful uh, regardless of his lack of talent maybe you know talent musical talent is that fair maybe musical talent is a fair thing to say because i still think he's a marketing genius but if you some if you think somebody only has like one style one song because the baby's getting that sort of same reaction right if you think he's only got one flow and he and he keeps being successful with that one flow and with that one sort of sound if you're not if you're an artist that has a repertoire and you feel as if people don't look at you the same way I get why it can be annoying, but I just think there's so much opportunity. There's so much, so many fans out there for everyone to have. There is no point of like I don't know. Will Meek would Meek even want a six nine fan anyway? Would you want that? You probably wouldn't. So why do you care if he's got fans that want to stream his stuff? You know, two million times a day or whatever. Or get you know whatever many views in an hour. Who gives a shit? Because they're never gonna listen to his album anyway. You know what I mean, um. I just think it's an interesting case a case study let's see what happens in the next couple of days i'm sure we'll get an album probably dropping soon it seems like he's recorded quite a few bits and bobs from what i've been hearing um he seems like he's uh been hard at work i'm sure there's a whole bunch of videos already filmed too it's interesting that he filmed that video for Gooba. it looks like he filmed it in like a storage container or something in his garden so no one could actually realize where he lives which is far, which is cool because I, I was quite worried that he would have filmed it in his garden, had this weird view because that's what happened in Don't Kill Cats, isn't it? Right, in Netflix where they were able to find the dude who was doing that, you know, sick shit to cats, based on where he was recording his videos at home. They were somehow able to like pick out bits of his room, triangulate stuff. Like people on the internet are fucking mad. So if he would have been able, to, if he would have filmed something in his garden with a clear view of some sort of landscape someone would have found where he lived and that wouldn't have been a good thing for him so i'm glad that he was kind of safe and able to kind of film it in some storage compartment so he didn't end up you know having the shortest kind of like back fresh home career ever but yeah he's doing what he's doing